Hi guys, welcome back to the Force Nines YouTube channel, the new and improved YouTube channel. New icon, new channel art, hopefully some better saves, and welcome, or should I say bienvenidos, to Spain. Because for the first time on my channel we're doing a save in Spain. This is an Andalusian adventure and it's a save with Sevilla. Sevilla, one of the oldest clubs in Spain, I'm going to do a little bit about the history of Sevilla later on in this video, um, and yeah, the whole aim of Sevilla win more La Liga titles, they've only won one in their time and win a Champions League, they've won five UEFA Cups but they've never won the Champions League so my aims for this hang with the big boys in La Liga, the Barcelonas, the Real Madrids win them the Champions League is going to be the ultimate goal and that's what we're going to do with this save hopefully it won't be too long, I reckon I could do this in three seasons and we'll see what we can do so let's jump straight in today we're going to do the meetings with the chairmen and the like and we'll go through the history of the club. Next episode, we'll have a look at the squads. We'll make a tactic and maybe play a game. So here we go. We're going to be meeting with the president, Jose Castro. So, uh, philosophist for the club. He wants us to sign young players for the first team and develop players using the club's youth system. So we're going to buy young and the young players we do have, we've got to develop them ourselves. So we have a one-year contract. We're getting £53,000 a week. Let's attend the meeting. And we'll do all this. So, um, yeah, I, I'll do a bit about, about the history, but we'll have the thing up so you can see that as well. Um, I'm fine with that. Those philosophies, we can change them later on if we need to. We will absolutely meet the journalists, and then we'll have a meeting with our assistant. So, transfers updates. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Of course, this has played with the uh, January update. This is the winter update. So, all of the uh, January signings are in the game. And as you can see, there is a few deals that are being sorted out. So, Eugene Kolopoyanka is going to be going to Sevilla uh, in well, it's next year. So, um, we've got him for a year and then he moves on. He's going to Schalke. He's a winger. He's pretty good. Of course, he was going to be signed by Liverpool quite a while ago, but um, it never went through. I think it was something... Something happened to Nipro's side, I don't remember the full details. And then Sevilla signed him on a free transfer, and uh, he's... Is he, is he being loaned to Schalke at the moment? He's actually on loan to Sch Schalke at the moment, so we're not going to see him. Because, uh, yeah, he's there on loan, and then he joins permanently. Uh, also, uh, away from the club at the moment, Juan Munoz is on loan at Levante. Cristoforo is on loan at Fiorentina. I do speak... I'd like to think fluent Spanish, so hopefully pronunciations are going to be good with the Spanish names, but when you've got names like Conor Playanka, it's going to be hard. Uh, players that are in at the moment, Stevan Jovetic is on loan from Inter Milan. I like Stevan Jovetic. I think had he had a fully fit season with Man City, he could have got a bunch of goals for them. Unfortunately, he only scored like what, eight goals in total in the league. I think if, he had a, if he'd been fully fit, I reckon he could have got a bunch more goals. Uh, speaking of Man City, we have Sami Nasri on loan from there at the moment. Uh, we have two players from Atletico Madrid as well. Matias Klanvitter, who is Argentinian, although it doesn't sound like with that surname. It sounds German. He's a defensive midfielder, and he's not too bad at all. And lastly, Luciano Vieto. So it'd be, it'd be Luciano, because he's Argentine. He's a striker. He's on loan from there as well. So we're going to be taking charge of most of the stuff. The only stuff we're not doing is the opposition instructions. This isn't like the Team Server Challenge where we have no control over transfers. We're going to be doing all the scouting. We're going to be making offers and handling contracts. So there's no like, there's no caveats to this at all. It's just a nice simple save with Sevilla where we can do anything we want. Okay, so we've got a registration window as well, which we will look at later on. Already we're seeing offers and stuff. People showing interest in players so here we go there's already been loan offers made for for ev and for borja lasso i'll have a look at these guys in full a bit later on here's our meeting with um juan manuel leo who is the assistant manager who's going to give us a squad report and a meeting with the staff now, an interesting thing about spain is that the lower divisions have the B teams. You've got your severe B team and your C teams. So I'm not entirely sure how it works with calling people up from those B, B squads because essentially they're reserves. 
but because they play in a separate league, I don't know if there's if it's the same process as a normal under 23s. So I'll have to look into that a bit more. I think we can just grab players when and when we want. But I'll, I'll look into that a bit further. As I said, this is my first time managing in Spain for a long, long time. First time on YouTube. I haven't done it at all since maybe FM09, something like that. Okay, that's all sorted. So here's our team report, which we'll look at next episode. And there's some advice here. I think that'll be everything. We'll have a press conference, I'm sure. So season expectations. So Champions League were expected to reach the last 16, which is, which is where they reached this season. Of course, Leicester knocked them out very recently. So I think we'll leave that as it is. Uh, the Super Cup's not important. Uh, the Spanish Cup's not important. And the Spanish Super Cup isn't important. As far as the uh, Spanish First Division, they want Champions League qualification for the first time. They can be done, I think. I'll do it. All right, let's introduce ourselves to the players. So we'll do that. Uh, I think we can qualify for the Champions League. They seem happy with that. And then we'll speak to our captain, who is uh, Vince Vicente Ibora. I've changed their captain quite a lot recently, Hasuvio, because he used to be, I think he used to be Koke at one point, or Coke, however you say it. Uh, Reyes was captain last season, and now it's Ibora. So, um, yeah, there's been quite a lot of changes in captaincy in uh, recent years. <laughs> That's really funny. You've taken this job without being able to speak Spanish. Won't it be tough to manage the side until you get to grips with the language? What? Could you speak a little slowly in future? Thank you. No, football's a universal language. So when I made the manager, uh, I forgot to set one of my languages as Spanish because I do speak it. But... Oh well, we'll just work with what we can. The league has to be priority, yep. Haven't won a league title since ages ago. Again, we'll discuss that when we get to the history, which I think we will jump onto now, unless there's anything else we need to look at. It's pre-season started. So I think, yeah, I think that will be um, where we leave that in terms of in-game. So what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to run you through a, a bit of the history of Sevilla. And um, hopefully you enjoyed this little video package. And then I'll come back to you in a few minutes time. Sevilla Football Club have the distinction of being the oldest club in Spain dedicated solely to football practice. They are the second oldest club in the country, the oldest being Recreativo de Huelva. A club whose initial purpose was to provide recreation for workers at the mines by the River Tinto. Sevilla and Recreativo contested Spain's first ever football match on the 8th of March 1890. Sevilla won 2-0. At first, Sevilla had to settle for being the best team in the region. Between 1917 and 1940, they won 16 out of 19 championships of Andalusia, placing second in the other three. Their first national success came in the 1930s, when they won two Copa del Rey titles in 1935 and 1939. In 1946, Sevilla won their first and only La Liga title, beating the favoured Barcelona by a single point. Two years later, they added a third Copa del Rey title to their resume. In 1956, the club's president, Ramon Sanchez Pizjuan, passed away suddenly. As a tribute to the man under whom Sevilla had won three Copa del Reyes, the club's planned stadium was named in his honour. Sevilla still use the Estadio Ramon Sanchez Pizjuan to this day. The new stadium incurred debts, and in the 1960s and 70s, Sevilla fell on tough times. Having been forced to sell some of its top players, Sevilla were relegated to the Segunda Division in 1968 their first time outside of the top tier in over 30 years, although they won promotion back the following season. For 20 years or so, the club maintained its La Liga status, and the stadium hosted a World Cup semi-final between West Germany and France when the tournament came to Spain in 1982. In 1995, Sevilla were again relegated to the Segunda División, this time on reasons of administration. The club were soon reinstated to La Liga. Fortunes improved at the turn of the century, and a 6th place finish in 2004 secured a UEFA Cup place for Sevilla. They also qualified the following season, and under head coach Juan de Ramos, Sevilla won their first ever European competition. A 4-0 win over Middlesbrough at the Philips Stadium in Eindhoven meant Sevilla had won the UEFA Cup. They followed this up with a victory in the UEFA Super Cup, defeating Champions League winners Barcelona 3-0 in Monaco. 
The 2006-2007 season ended with Sevilla successfully defending their UEFA Cup, defeating Espanyol at Hampton Park in Glasgow in an All-Spanish final. With the team's level 2-2 after extra time, they went to penalties. Sevilla goalkeeper Andres Palop saved three Espanyol spot kicks and won the UEFA Cup for Sevilla. In 2007 got even better for the club as they won the Copa del Rey, defeating Getafe 1-0. Freddy Canute scored the only goal. They also finished third in last season's La Liga, gaining qualification to the Champions League. Their third piece of silverware in 2007 came in the Supercopa de España, the equivalent of England's Community Shield. But 2007 ended on a sour note. Defender Antonio Puerta died after a heart attack. Sevilla lost the UEFA Super Cup in a 3-1 defeat to AC Milan, and in October, their manager Juan de Ramos resigned to join Tottenham Hotspur. In 2010, Sevilla won their fifth Copa del Rey title, with Diego Capel and Jesus Navas scoring in a 2-0 win over Atletico Madrid. In 2014, Sevilla won a third European competition, defeating Benfica on penalties in Turin to win the Europa League. Once again, Sevilla successfully defended their European title, winning 3-2 in Warsaw over Ukrainian side Dnipro. This made Sevilla the first side to win Europe's secondary competition four times. The club reached their third consecutive final in 2016. Despite trailing 1-0 at half-time, Sevilla bounced back with a goal from Kevin Camero and a seven-minute brace from Captain Coke. Sevilla had won their third successive Europa League title, their fifth overall. Sevilla have not won the La Liga title since their only triumph in 1946, and despite their five UEFA Cups, in the Champions League, they've never gotten past the quarter-finals. That is where we come in. So there you go. The aim for this series? Win them some more La Liga titles? Win them a Champions League? And the way we're going to do that is we're going to buy young, we're going to develop our youngsters, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun and hopefully you will enjoy the ride as much as I will. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and if you enjoyed that little history package, then uh, please leave a like down below. I'm not trying to aim for 10 likes in this video. That would be fantastic. Uh, any comments down below? Leave any comments. You know, I always enjoy seeing comments. So leave them down below and um, let me know, you know, if there's any pe people that I should look at signing or any positions you think I need to improve because we haven't really looked at the squad yet. So uh, a little bit of advice before we get to that would be fantastic. And if you want to see videos as and when they turn up on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. I have a goal of reaching 500 subs before FM18 comes out. So if I could reach that, that would be fantastic and your help would be greatly appreciated for that. So uh, thank you very much for watching. And next episode, we are going to have a good look at our squads. We're going to build a tactic and we may play a match. So see you then. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.